Hey everybody, I am here to Al explain and then repair a dual mass flywheel on my Mark V Volkswagen GTI. This is what it sounds like on a cold start if your dual mass flywheel is failing on your DSG transmission. This job does require the disconnection of the transmission from the engine by removing the bolts moving it out to the side and then lowering it down out of the car so i will need to lift this car pretty high and as with all hip shot car repair videos i have never done this repair before so i will do my best to leave in as many mistakes as possible so that everyone can learn from them and also laugh at me as i do them <laughs> so let's go see what the new flywheel looks like this is a sax dual mass flywheel um sax performance they are now owned i believe by zf or zf um, which makes the 8-speed transmission and a couple of pretty great performance cars that have been coming out lately, like the new Supra and whatnot. So um, I trusted them as a third party. Since Saks, I believe, does make the OEM flywheel for this DSG transmission, I wasn't super concerned with getting something that didn't have VW and Audi stamps on it. Typically what happens when a dual mass flywheel fails in these DSG transmissions is these springs wear out to the point where they can pop out of place or possibly break. In a catastrophic failure scenario, the spring would pop out of the dual mass flywheel and possibly ruin the transmission. There's two separate disc portions of this dual mass flywheel and they rotate independently you should have very a very minimal amount of movement between those two discs and i'm expecting that when i pull the old flywheel out that there will be a significantly larger amount of play in those two disc portions than there are in this one this dual mass flywheel ran me a little bit under 500 dollars. i have seen some oem ones running a little bit over a thousand an additional complication with buying a dual mass flywheel for these mark 5 gti's is that it seems like the part numbers that you need are different for each model year. This one that I ended up purchasing ends with L. The letter at the end of the part number is what differentiates them, so to speak. I have managed to lift the car pretty high here. Um, and the biggest thing that I want to tackle is these drive axle bolts here, since these drive axles will need to come down when the transmission comes down. Um, now, I'm trying to follow the factory service manual as closely as possible, and basically it says to have a second te technician press the brake pedal as you remove the drive axle bolts. My guess is because they're on so tight, it's just going to turn the hub when you try to loosen it. So, um, I just found that I was lucky enough to have a piece of wood just about long enough to press the brake pedal down while um, having it wedged up against the edge of the seat here. battery and its case. The, those are all very easy parts to remove. It's just a single 13 millimeter bolt over here and that allows the battery to come out of the case and then you just remove these three I believe 10 millimeter bolts and this kind of comes out uh, diagonally upward in this direction. I have removed the belly pan, you can see that over here. In addition the fender liner on the driver's side, the starter, which was actually a lot simpler than I was uh, expecting it to be. It's just this little hex bolt. I believe that is a, a 14 millimeter. And then uh, this is one of those typical VW pinch electrical connectors and that just pops right off. That is holding a ground wire, as you can see right there, um, along with a little protective cover uh, for this positive terminal. So um, you can just kind of peel this cover away, it's just rubber, uh, and then loosen this along with that plug and that should come out fine. Found the other starter bolt, it is right up there. When you disconnect these oil cooler lines, expect a lot of fluid to come out <laughs> and be prepared for it. These two lines I have clamped off with these pliers and yes, I know uh, it's just bare metal on hose, but I have checked the integrity and it's not hurting it, so we should be okay for now. I'm gonna continue working up here. Uh, as you can see, this is where I believe the mechatronics sit up here at the front of the transmission. And there is a bolt right there. You can see that in the center of the frame. It's holding a wiring bracket up to the transmission. So I'm gonna have to get that off and then also this little piece. I 
did spend a decent amount of time with this transmission shift lever cable here, here uh, down here. Uh, there was a lock washer here. Getting that off actually took a little bit of time. Um, took a couple different uh, types of pliers and eventually I think a flathead and a chisel. Um, I, and obviously, as you can see, I wasn't too rough with it, but you kind of have to, you know, peel it off and use a decent bit of force. You see where that peg is. There was also a little lock washer there. That wasn't difficult at all. And then you can just kind of pull the cable off and um, now it's off to the side. I don't know how to get rid of this because it looks like this metal bracket is all the way around the cable, but... I'm guessing that when I'm able to lower the transmission a little bit, the two bolts that are mounted back there are going to be a little bit more uh, visible, and I'll be able to get them out maybe while I have the transmission on the way down. But I uh, disconnected this control arm on the other side, uh, moved that out, and as you can see, the uh, drive axle is also out, just kind of sitting here hanging out. Uh, removed the little sway bar, uh, put the bolt back on, and just kind of had it off to the side. Uh, and then the... Oh my god, I forgot exactly what this is called, but took the bolt out here. I then moved on to the subframe. One good and easy way to tell which bolts you need to remove is you can kind of take your hand and feel up here at the top of the subframe and kind of feel which bolts are poking out. If they're coming out all the way, then you probably don't need to remove them since they're not going into the frame of the vehicle. Uh, but so far it's looking like there's only, I think, six or eight bolts that I need to remove, so... Um, this one popping through this control arm hole here, the one uh, here uh, where this control arm sits, where its bushing is. Um, and then obviously this big boy, uh, you can see these bolts are very, they're unique uh, for sure. They have a couple of stubs in the middle of the thread. And you can tell that you have the right bolts obviously by the head size and then you can also take a look at the uh, numbers on each bolt. So for example, this one has 10-9. Um, if you have any matching bolts with the same head size, then you should be okay to use those. You can also obviously check the length and the thread depth once you actually get the bolts out. Last night I did disconnect this exhaust bracket. That's just two little bolts there. Um, not easy to remove or not uh, difficult to remove at all. So once I get those six and disconnect the uh, dog bone mount here, uh, I'm going to just put this, take this all down in one piece. So, and I'm just going to be doing these two bolts. I'm going to leave this bushing in. Obviously this has to be pressed out. So I'm not even going to mess with the bolt. Um, again, the theory here is to mess with as little bolts as possible. Since a lot of these are torque to yield bolts. And I have a jack stand under here supporting the engine from where I remove that pendulum mount. Uh, just in case it droops a little bit. Uh, it does tend to do that. And I noticed that when I um, put new bolts on this guy. And I will need new bolts for this again. So I, I am trying to do this the right way. Since I'm removing the subframe along with the steering rack. I need to take this piece off. Uh, and then remove the steering gear that the steering wheel is connected to. I do see this wire also. It looks like it goes up to the harness, but I gotta figure out where it's connected to on the bottom here, and then I'll try to find where to disconnect that to get the whole rest of this steering rack down. But this is where the steering rack bolts up, so... Um, I did get that off, and it's much farther down on the other side, so hopefully that'll be the last piece. Oh yeah, and right there, that's the uh, steering gear. I disconnected this ground here that pulls up. Uh, it is connected to this wire, which is on a plastic pole with a couple of straps. Honestly, it's not a huge deal because this clamp's going to kind of hold it down, but you can always get some adhesive or some more of that like fabric tape to help clean that up if you're doing a clean build. Um, but that... And then down here, uh, that has a little bit more, a little clamp right there. Uh, that goes down to this electrical plug, disconnect that. Um, and this is in the factory service manual, actually, I noticed. Um, the instructions are different for steering rack versus subframe. But steering rack, again, less bolts. I'd rather just take that all down at once. Um, it's this second terminal right here on the fuse box. So you will undo, I believe it's just this one bolt, I'm pretty sure. Um, on this 80 fuse right here, the second line, and that should come off, and that'll allow for you to get that whole line down. I, I did push all of that cabling down here. Uh, let's see if we can get that. Well, there's some of it. It's pretty easy, though. You can just kind of push it down there and make sure it's not going to snag when you lower it, and that should be uh, everything. These, I keep forgetting what they're called, alignment arm things. 
um, are a little bit tough to get out and I cannot make too much noise this late at night so I have treated them with rust penetrator that should hopefully allow for the rest of this to drop down you can already see here's a gap of where that bolt hole was so it's down quite a bit I just got to get it the rest of the way and um, I believe these are the primary culprits uh, that are keeping me from doing that and I'll come back at it tomorrow and we'll see where we're at I finally remembered these are freaking tie rods um, for the steering rack, but um, that's what these are called. But as you can see, I've got them loose now. But I did have to take a decently large sledge to it to be able to get them both out. Ow. <laughs> that was my head hitting the mirror. Alright y'all, this is a Mark V GTI's, ah, whoops, this is a Mark V GTI's steering rack and subframe all in one piece. That's where the electrical connector for the power steering is, so that would have been impossible to get out without messing with more stuff, so I'm definitely glad I took care of it at the top end, definitely make sure that you do that. Tons of room back here now to be able to hopefully lower it out. These are M, I believe, 10 triple squares. And obviously if you're doing this job, I'm highly suggesting that you have a pretty comprehensive set of tools. Make sure you've got that triple square set. You've got plenty of wobble sockets, adapters, extensions, all that stuff to be able to get to these because some of them are pretty hard to reach places. But then once you get to the bottom, you end up running into um, a few bolts that are, um, they have Allen heads on them. These actually came out easier for me with an Allen wrench because of the you know tight um, how tightly um, close these bolts are to the rest of the, this transmission and engine wall. So um, I ended up using an Allen head to initially loosen them. And I just took the biggest wrench I had and linked it to the end of the Allen wrench to give myself enough leverage to be able to get that off. Do another look around of the engine and transmission. Make sure everything that is linked to it is disconnected before you start lowering it. That's my gap already. We're already making really good progress just by removing the bolts. There's no need to pry anything out. It should just come out um, from what I can tell as it stands. And I can already see on the inside of here that that dual mass flywheel looks really rusty. So we'll take a look at it and see what happens. But um, I've already got my jack under here supporting the transmission. I haven't even removed any transmission mount bolts yet. This is just transmission to engine stuff. Um, I figured doing this first might be a little bit easier that way um, this we are I already know that this is kind of on its way out before I start lowering it behold the Volkswagen 02e 6-speed DSG transmission from my mark 5 uh, I'll just say that uh, as of August of 2019 this is my greatest accomplishment uh, in my automotive mechanic side career thing. Our culprit is right in front of us. The dual mass flywheel, right there. When I took the transmission out, uh, this cable did decide to come down, uh, but I believe now I, I, I did disconnect it from the transmission, so now it should be able to go back up there where it was supposed to be, and I think that's just, that's just shielding right there, so we should be okay, but I um, took those two bolts out uh, and those are um, here. I've remounted that bracket. So, but that is the entire transmission along with the uh, axle shafts. So, um, you can disconnect them. I didn't, but uh, and it might make it probably a little bit easier. Uh, check out this vertical play. <laughs> uh, the new flywheel definitely does not have any of that. Uh, that actually very well could be my noise, but um, there's obviously some some disc play to a decent amount of it if you can see that uh, I think there's actually a little bit more but I'm you know I'm not trying too hard but again I'm not trying too hard proving that this thing is probably going out so I've finally been able to get these flywheel bolts loose that's the first thing I did the second I got down here besides uh, making sure the engine was level I raised it a little bit so that I could put the jack up a bit higher to support it but uh, I do know that I believe VW, again, recommends a special tool to loosen this flywheel. For me, uh, sticking a quarter inch extension into one of the engine and transmission bolt holes and then running a pry bar um, with a piece of wood or any leverage you can get under there and just kind of, you know, jamming it in there. And as long as you don't skip teeth, uh, I was able to loosen all six uh, without a problem here. 
Ironically, my camera decided to cut out at the most important moment, as it usually does. But you guys kind of know what happens. I took it out. It fell on me, and I died. I'm just kidding. Um, but here are the... <laughs> Here's the old dual mass flywheel and here is the new one. Um, as you can see, the actually the build itself I think is slightly different where um, some of these like cotter pin looking things are, are tilted quote unquote on this one and not on this one. Uh, and you can see obviously this plate on the top is slightly thicker than the original one was and same thing with uh, the teeth here. You can see that that's slightly raised compared to this one. Um, but the installation portion looks like it's exactly the same. And here's a closer look at the other side of the uh, old original flywheel. As you can see, there's plenty of rust buildup over here. Still got the same amount of movement on this side. Uh, this one was a luck flywheel. So I'm going to get this in the car now. Bye. The new, 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 the new dual mass flywheel is in. Um, now torquing that was definitely not easy without the flywheel holding tool and I wasn't even familiar that that was a thing so uh, My fault for forgetting that but uh, I would definitely suggest buying that. Uh, I don't know how well it works I mean I was able to fully torque all of them But I had to do it in a lot of stages and it was very slow and tedious. So I definitely wouldn't suggest uh holding out <laughs> on buying that holding tool. So I tried lifting this guy in with this jack because this car decided to tilt its way off of this jack stand. It's up higher on this side now and my jack isn't capable of getting up that high. I'm going to see if I can pick up a transmission jack from uh, Harbor Freight tomorrow uh, and put this transmission on that and hopefully that should be able to get it up high enough. As you can see I've got the drive axles up on boxes just just to keep them in good shape. Got all my bolts together so that when I drive by the dealer I've got all my uh, ducks in a row so that I know what bolts to get. Um, the new transmission bolt uh, bolts for the mount I have uh, put in in advance just so we have those. I do understand now why it was a lot more or would be a lot more convenient to take the drive axles out and I mean I guess not only because I had to angle it in through this fender to to get the transmission to fit back under the car but once this drive axle comes up it's gonna hit this little bolt uh, marker point right here um, if you put it in straight up so um, you can obviously take this off to just be able to lift it up around it But I think you'll still also have to take this little crown piece off as well, but I'm not doing that I'm just gonna lift it a little bit behind and then move it forward as I fasten it. So Yeah, but it's looking like this is gonna work out. I strap the strap for this actually worked out really well This is the 450 pound transmission jack from Harbor Freight and it seems to hold up pretty well It definitely takes a lot of a uh, manpower to lift this thing up since it's not hydraulic, but I mean, hey, it, it, it keeps the thing a lot more balanced than my regular jack did. Um, I'll probably use the hydraulic one for the steering rack since it's just a lot easier and definitely not as heavy. Mm -hmm.